Amos chapter 2. So five nations have been proclaimed against. So now we come to the sixth nation. Chapter 2 verse 1. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away its judgment punishment because he burned the bones of the king of Edom to lie. We also know that the Moabs are relatives, they are related to Israel, right? The Moabs, historically, if you read all the way to Lot and so on, related. You can read all this in Genesis. So, in other words, they are related by blood. All this found in Genesis chapter 9. Moab. Moab and Ammon. All you can find in Genesis chapter 9. Descendants of Lot. And again, they had this vengeful spirit against Israel. And if you read, I think, the book of Ruth, uh, you know, Moab is described as what? The wash pot. You know, it's a wash pot. Sihang. <laughs> toilet bowl. Toilet bowl. Okay? Uh, because they had been bad. They had been unkind to the people of Israel. But that was the people of Israel. But right now, what we read here in verse 1, he was unkind to the king of Edom. What did he do? He burned the bones of the king of Edom to life. Eh? Why? What's wrong with that? Why cannot? Now, in Jewish culture, and even in, in those uh, in, in those era, they bury the body. In fact, today, the religion there is if the person died within before sunset, uh, must quickly bury. They don't cremate. So you see in Singapore, you go to Mandai and so on, uh, you don't see them cremated. They don't. They bury the body. So Chua Chu Kang is you know, full of them, make space for them to bury. That is their practice. Forbidden to <coughs> burn the bodies. So you look at 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 26. Second Kings chapter three verse twenty six. Okay. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was going against him, he took with him 700 swordsmen to break through opposite the king of Edom. But they could not. Then he took his oldest son, who was to reign in his place, and offered him for a burnt offering on the wall. And there came great wrath against Israel, and they withdrew from him and returned to their own land. So you find that the Moabs, the Moabites, uh, it seems like it is their practice. So just here we read, he burned the bones of the king of Edom, which was down in the south, the enemy, their enemies. But he also, the king of Moab, also had burned his son. I mean, you have got Jewish roots, you, you will know that this is not allowed. And so you, you say, eh, uh, but he's, uh, then what will God do? God is upset. God is this, this. You not only bring your, I mean, offer your son as a burnt offering, which is not acceptable to God, but you also burn, you do the king. I believe if the king of Edom had died <coughs> and had been buried, and here we say burn the bones, not burn the body, burn the bones. So that means King of Edom had died and King of Edom had been buried and now they dig up the bones and they burn the bones. 
it is really an insult. But still, you might say, eh, hey, but he's a foreigner one. Edomites foreigner one. Eh, hey, but Edomites uh, are also what? Relatives, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Just now we just read. There, God is displeased. He dug up the bones and he burned the bones. Some people think it's, oh, he, he killed the king of Edom, but the Bible did not say burn the body of the king of Edom, but burn the bones of king. So likely the king of Edom was buried, dug up the body, the bones, and then burn it. So, he was going against the word of God. This is called desecration. Desecrate means the word sacred, Desecrate, you are going against sacredness. There is sacredness in the body, but he went against. So, desecration. He lacked respect for the dead, the male bikes. So, what will God do in verse 2? But I will send a fire. Again, we see fire. But I will send a fire again upon Moab, and it shall devour the palaces of Kirioth. Moab shall die with tumult with shouting and trumpet sound. And I will cut off the judge from its midst and slay all its princes with him, says the Lord. So same thing, they brought judgment upon themselves and God, using fire, will destroy the Moabs because they have been unkind to eat off. So that is the which nation? That is the sixth nation. Next, we go on to the seventh. Seven. Now, verse four. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they have despised the law of the Lord and have not kept his commandments their lies lead them astray lies which their fathers followed now in the previous in the previous six nations God did not punish the rest because they broke the law did not say just describe them they cut the body they burn the bones and so on but for the people of Judah. He said, because they have despised or rejected the law of the Lord and have not kept His commandments. So, looking at this, so after finishing with Ammon, with Edom, with Ammon, Moab, now it comes to Judah. Hey, we are safe because we are here. We are here. He is not scolding us yet. Now he's scolding Judah, our southern brothers. And it is actually getting closer to them. But they didn't know any better. And again, do not despise the word of God. Listen to us. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And His word, His word, not even a small, I can't pronounce the, the Jewish thing, a thing or a cross or whatever, nothing shall be removed from His word. His word will stay. And all God wants from us is obedience. And these people have despised the law of the Lord. And as I mentioned, Luke chapter 12, verse 48, more is given, more is expected. And for that, these people are held accountable. Because God gave the word, gave the law to who? To the Jews. He did not give to the Gentiles. So give to you, you should take heart to obey. But they chose not to. Okay, Luke chapter 12. Let me read from verse 47. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will, will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone 
to whom much was given of him, much will be ex will be required, and from who him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. Judah, you have been given the law. You have been given the word. And more than that, God has given you grace and mercy to this day. Otherwise, you would have wrought in Egypt. So more have been given to you, more is expected. But since you choose to live in lies, which is the last part of verse 4, their lies lead them astray. What lies are these? These are the lies of the devil. These are the idolatrous practices and beliefs. So instead of channeling their worship to God, they turn their worship to false gods. Instead of the good news, they turn to fake news. <coughs> Follow me. So all the fake news are deception. They are lies. That's why God said, their lies lead them astray. Lies which their fathers followed. That means not only you, your father, your uncle, your grandchildren, all followed lies. Verse 5. But I will send a fire upon Judah and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. So, actually, uh, some scholars describe Amos as what? Prophet of fire. <laughs> open mouth <-mounted> fire. <laughs> open mouth <-mounted> fire. <laughs> that is how God pronounced His judgment. And we all know, this also came to pass. He wasn't the only one who prophesied against Judah that fire will come upon Judah and the palaces of Jerusalem will be uh, burned down. Other prophets also did so. This is just another confirmation. And which year did this happen? Which year did this happen? When we were studying the major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Which year was it? 586. Next again. <laughs> well, right? The southern kingdom, Judah, they were deported in three batches. First batch was 605 BC. Second batch was 597 BC. Third batch, 586 BC. And that's when Nebuchadnezzar's people came and they took everything from the temple, the articles and so on. And then after that, burn down the temple, the palaces, the walls, and everything. Okay? So, this came to pass. So, that is the seventh nation. Hayo Ika, one more. Wow, if you were up there in if you were up there in Northern Kingdom, let me guess, let me see who, you know, who is the eighth nation? It must say you. Oh, me. Wow. What else God wants to bless me? You know, must be some more good news for me. We will see. So verse 6. Now I'm just making some animation so, so you, you understand the, the thing better. That is probably the mind of the, 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 the people in northern Israel thinking that wow, God must be reserving the best for me. Verse 6. Thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not turn away its punishment. Oh, then you look at the northern Israelites and look at their face color all change. <laughs> From red becoming a bit pale really. Why I, am I sensing something very uh, nasty coming? Because they sell the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. You find that the description in for Israel uh, is very uh, specific. It, when we go to chapter 3, even more details. They sell the righteous for silver. So what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Bribery. They bribe the judges. They interfere with the 
justice system. And because they got money. That's why OJ Simpson could uh, get out. Yeah. Of course, he went back in again, but he could get out for the murder of his girlfriend or wife. Because in the US, they say they got two sets of laws. One for the rich and one for the not so rich. Because the rich can employ lawyers, they engage lawyers, pay them millions of dollars, but they can twist and turn and find loopholes in the in, in the law. But the poor who can't, the poor guy will just have to rot in prison. So, this is not new. This happened even in the time of Amos. Because they sell righteous for, they sell the righteous for silver. The righteous, the people. So likely these are the oppressed people, likely these are the poor, they can't defend themselves. Or they employ false witness, pay false witness, now go there and tell lies. Yes, you know, I saw him do this, I saw him do that. But these are false witnesses paid for by the rich so that the rich will not be punished. So there's lack of justice, lack, lack of integrity. But God is watching. God is watching. And that is the first charge against them. In total, uh, you're going to help me count. God threw out at them 11 charges. So the first charge is they sell the righteous for silver. The second charge, and the poor for a pair of sandals. And the poor for a pair of sandals. So what does this mean? Slavery. Slavery. That's all. You want a pair of sandals, right? The poor people want a pair of sandals, right? Fine. You sell yourself to me, be my slave. Hey, the guy only wants a pair of something so that his soul, when he walk on the rocky road, will not be hurt or uncomfortable. Okay? You work for me, lah. So you can find all this, you can find all this uh, in Exodus, in Leviticus, in Deuteronomy and so on. Uh, this is oppression. You are not helping. There is no compassion for the poor. So that is the second charge. They sold, no, and the poor for a pair of sandals. So imagine uh, if you were Mrs. Marcos. Uh, poor. No, how did she get so many pairs of shoes? <laughs> okay, anyway, verse 7. They pant after the dust of the earth which is on the head of the poor. This is very uh, deep meaning. You see, the poor, when will they put dust on their head? Morning. Not for cosmetic. So in, in a time of mourning, sometimes they burn ashes, you know, burn paper, burn whatever, then the ashes they put on there. These people are so poor, they got nothing to burn to put ashes on their to, to, to put ashes on them to, to be in the mourning uh, attitude. So they pick dust, you know, dust. You know, dust on the floor. Put, even the dust uh, on the head of the poor, the rich want to take. They pan, they, they, the rich. Uh, they pan after the dust of the earth, which is on the head of the poor. Means what? Everything you want to take away from the poor. You want to take away everything from the poor. You just want to... Uh, what shall I say? Uh, make him broke. Or just, just remove anything, like anything. Even dust also you have to take away from him. And that is how they treated the poor. So you treat them like dust, or maybe worse than dust. So that is the third charge. And God is counting. God is recording. And pervert the way of the 
humble. That is the fourth charge. And pervert the way of the humble. Now, the humble is the meek person. The meek person is probably the type, no, the humble person, meek person is probably the type is, I mind my own business. You know, I, I lead a quiet life, I do my own thing. But they pervert. Pervert, that means what? Try and get them off the path that they are travelling. Means corrupt them. Corrupt them. You never drink. Help you to drink. Teach you to drink. You never smoke. I teach you to smoke. You never lie. I teach you to lie. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you look at Proverbs 29, 23. Proverbs 29, 23. One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly, he who is humble, he who is meek, will obtain honor. Today you bully him, right? Today you bully him because you are proud, right? God is watching. And God will bring you low, the rich one. And God will give honor to the oppressed, to the poor. So that is the fourth charge. You pervert the way of the humble. The fifth charge. This one is terrible. A man and his father go into the same girl to defile my holy... No, okay, that was the sixth charge. Fifth charge. A man and his father go into the same girl. Now, what do you understand from this? They sleep with the same girl. And the Jewish law doesn't allow. Don't say Jewish law. But in our society, do we? We don't want. But they were so perverted, the Israelites who know the law of God. Now, to put it in proper context, it is not the correct thing, but that's what they have. They had... Uh, uh, those false gods, those temples, those cultics, they have temple prostitution. So all these girls, you know, uh, did not say they're Jewish girls, I don't think so, but let's say Gentile girls or whatever, say at this temple and so on, and they are offering themselves as temples, goddess or prostitutes or something. So their requirement they are practiced in all these cults, in these temples, is to cleanse yourself. The Jewish temple is you've got to go to the water basin, you wash before you go in. So this one is, you must sleep with the prostitute at the temple before you can go in to worship the God, the idols. So that's why you have the father and the son and whoever else. Just go, they share the same girl. Because these are temple prostitutes. That's what it means. First of all, you should not be going to the temple. So you wonder, did they go to the temple for worship or did they go to the temple for the same God? You have to make your own decision. Okay? But God pressed the, the fifth charge to them. And this is immorality. Totally no no. Sixth charge. To defile my holy name. To defile my holy name. Means what? To treat God's name as nothing. To treat God's name as nothing. Which we still see people do today. Now the strict Jews are the orthodox Jews. They will not even say God. They will not spell G-O-D. They spell G, then underscore D. They will not spell Yahweh. They will not call Yahweh. They don't think they are worthy to call Yahweh. So that's why you have Y-H-W-H. It's not a whole full, full word in spelling. But these people, they mistreat God's name as if it is nothing. Today we also find, my God, 
see the cockroach. My God. <laughs> Hello. Do you know my God? Do you know who is this God? But they, they, they use God's name so, you know, and then they use Jesus' name like a curse word. Right? These people, these people, they've got something waiting for them, judgment. Unless they repent. Because they defile His holy name. And more so for the Israelites, you are people of Israel. You are God's children. You are to, you know, you read, uh, you, you read the, the, the law and so on. They are to worship Him, to bless Him, to honor His name. But they have treated His name. They defiled. I mean, just by going to the cultic temple instead of going to the temple, you are defiling. You, you take His name as of no consequence. Now you worship another god, a false god. So, that is six charge. Now, seven. They lie down by every altar on clothes taken in pledge and drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. So, they lie down in, by every altar on clothes taken in pledge. So, that is the seventh charge, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if the poor has need of something and he cannot pay, you can, he, you, I mean, the poor can pledge his cloak. Okay? Uh, I, 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 need, I need some bread. I don't have. I need to feed my family. So I tell you, you take my cloak and then I take the bread. But the law requires that by nightfall, you must return the cloak to the poor. You can take back tomorrow, but you must return tonight. Why? Because in the desert land, in, in the Middle East, at night it's cold. It's cold. So the cloak will keep him warm. But these people, instead of giving back to the poor at night, they use this cloak and they sleep on it. They sleep on it. They lie down by every altar. And this altar is idolatry. Eh? Every altar. There's only one altar. If you are a Jew, you know that there's a temple. There's only one altar. But now it's every altar. You mean a lot. These are temples. So they lie down, the rich, they lie down by every altar on clothes taken in flesh. They are not even using this to cover themselves. You're just using them in okay, the floor dirty, uh, lie down, put the cloth, put the thing. Okay, he, they probably have their own cloaks. They probably have their own covering. Yeah, hello. The guy who pledged to you, that guy is shivering in the cold. He doesn't have anything. But you are lying on that and at the temples. That is the seventh charge. What is the eighth charge? What is the eighth charge? Okay, no, no, sorry. The seventh charge is they lie down by every altar. So they lie down at the temples. The eighth charge is clothes taken in pledge that they did not return. So that's the eighth charge. The ninth charge is what? They drank and got drunk in the house of God. They drank the wine of the condemned in the house of God. They were practicing rituals. They were practicing rituals and they drank and they were drunk. Do you get drunk on the third floor? No lah, can't be lah, can't be la. On Rabina juice, you cannot get drunk. <coughs> now, but some churches, some churches, they serve Holy Communion and it is one. And it is dedicated, it is prayed for, it is sanctified unto the Lord, and you take the cup. That is Holy Communion, together with the bread. But, no way, nowhere, you can read Exodus and so on, are you allowed to get drunk in the sanctuary? Because you are to be filled with the Spirit. 
not the wrong spirit. You have to be, I mean, you have to be in your senses and so on to worship unto the Lord and not be controlled and distracted by other things. But here they were. So I, 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 I repeat, uh, charge number seven is they lie down by every altar. That means in temples, idolatrous. Charge number eight is they take the clothes but did not return the clothes at night to the person who pledged. And number ten, you know, number nine. Number nine is they drank in the temple and got drunk in the house of their God. Drunkenness. So now we go on to verse 9. So we have how many charges now? Nine. nine. I still got two more. Oh, you two. Huh? Okay, verse 9. Yet it was I. Now you, as we read 9, 10, 11, you will see the word I. 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 What God has done for them. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite, or also known as Ammonites. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the Cedars, and he was as strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Now, God is saying, I destroyed the Amorites, or also known as Ammonites. And you know, these people are big. They are tall and they are strong as the oak tree. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. That is, God destroyed their whole generation. You know what I mean? Nothing to grow, nothing deep, no, 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 destroy, uprooted them, destroy them totally. So God is saying, these are stronger people, I destroy them. Let's look at the other one. And also, it was I who brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. I raise up some of your sons as prophets and some of your young men as Nazarites. Is it not so, O you children of Israel? Says the Lord. So what God is saying in comparison, the Amorites are bigger than you, taller than you, stronger than you, and yet I destroy them. Surely, you are shorter than them. I'm just saying. You are shorter than them. You are smaller than them. You are weaker than them. I can also destroy you. You understand? If they are so big, I destroy them. Who are you? I can also destroy you. And don't forget, I took you out of slavery. Out of Egypt. And I led you for 40 years in the wilderness. To possess what? To possess the land. I even gave you the land. But they were ungrateful. And God said, I also raised some of your sons as prophets. Prophets are people who represent me, God. Represent God. And God spoke through them, like Moses and so on. I raised up for you. God did not raise the false prophets for the Gentile nation. But God raised prophets for His nation to speak to them. And He also raise up Nazarites. Now, Nazarites are people set aside for God's work. They, they were told that they cannot what? Drink wine. Cannot what? Cut hair. So, I'm not Nazarite. Yeah. <laughs> so, cannot drink wine, cannot cut hair. Someone was the third thing. <coughs> cannot go near dead bodies, cannot touch dead bodies. Right? Why did God forbid these people, these Nazarites? Because so that they do not, they do not walk in the ways of the Gentiles' cultic practice. In the temple and in their cults and so on, they get drowned and they uh, uh, cut their hair and do all kinds of things. And they do funny things with dead bodies. 
So, just want to make this Nazarite totally set aside. Okay, that they are different. Like day is from night. They are different from the uh, Gentiles. So God is telling them, I did all this for you. But what did you do for me in return? I've already pronounced nine charges against you. Still got two more. So what are the two? Verse 12. But you gave the Nazarites wine to drink. They were perverting. Earlier, they were perverting the way of the humble. Now they are perverting the way of the Nazarites. Take a drink, nobody watching. One sip only. One sip only. One smoke. Like, put it in your lips. Uh. Don't, don't, don't inhale. Just put it on your lips. Look macho, you know. <laughs> but that's how they all started. In the army camp, elsewhere, go to work. Yeah, I, 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 I know of uh, people in my company, non-smokers, but after a while, oh, they all worship pillars. <laughs> all pillar worshippers. Not temple worshippers, all pillar worshippers. Because cannot smoke in the building, right? Got to go downstairs. Huh? So after a while, like, you see, they all surround and worship the pillar. You see, got Chong Hyung, you know, like cross, they, all, they all burn cigarettes. Wow, who's uh, smoking that? Huh? Yeah. Burn rubbish, burn pillar. But many of them were not smokers. But they come into the, the job, they meet new friends, and one start smoking, one start passing around. And I tell you, some of them are Christians. A few of them I scolded them. I said, You from which church? Not this church, uh, just put that down. Below. <laughs> you ask your pastor, can you know, um, gone? Uh, I see some of them. And after a while, they also stopped going to church. One of them, hey, okay, follow me, follow me. So I thought, What he wants. Brought me to a dustbin. And what worship the dustbin? Then I said, Are you not a believer? Yeah, that was a long time ago. I stopped. Then you stay in the dustbin, you finish, you come and look. I don't like the dustbin smell, I also don't like his nicotine smell. Okay? So, that is perverting the way of the Nazareth. So, don't, don't need your brother or your sister to stumble. God will come after you. And commanded the prophecy, prophets. That is, just now that was Nazareth, uh, ask them to drink, compromise their calling. That is charge number 10. So, charge number 11 is what? Commanded the prophets, say, shut your mouth. Don't prophesize. Why? Because in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, you know 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, in the last days, uh, they got itchy years. Uh. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. If they want uh, this classroom not big enough, but they don't want okay. So, but having aging years, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. So, they hear what they want to hear. If they don't like to hear, they switch off. So, they're going to look for people who will say sweet, nice things to them, to suit them. It's crazy. It is crazy, but it is still happening today because the people don't read the word, study the word for themselves and so they listen to others. But prophets, prophets, those days God spoke through prophets and they told the prophets, Amos, Job, we don't want to listen to you anymore. Later you go to chapter 7, they say, please Amos, you come down from the south right, you come out from the south right, yeah, go back to the causeway and go home. We don't want to listen to you. Okay. They told Jeremiah, keep quiet. Ezekiel, keep quiet. 
verse 13. So 11 charges gone. Now you see the beginning of the end for the people of Israel. Verse 13, Behold, I am weighed down by you as a cart full of sheep is weighed down. You know, a cart, if you put things on it, it is being heavy, right? Laden. And the movement will be a bit more laboured. So the picture is, God is saying, Behold, I am weighed down, I am pressed down by you. So it's as if God is carrying their burden. You see, look at all the 11 charges. Look at all that you are doing. I have been carrying you. You can let you through the 40 years. I've been supporting you, loving you. But you are loading me with all these problems. But it's only a description, you understand? So that they understand. Because these people are farmers. They understand cuts and so on. But it doesn't mean, uh, God, oh, you're so heavy. Oh, I'm going to drop you already. No, it doesn't mean that. But it just means that God is burdened by their disobedience. God is put in a very difficult situation. You know, some parents, uh, when they want to cane a child, uh, you know what they say? Actually, uh, this hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> you know that? Uh? I don't want to cane you. Because when I came you, it hurt you. God, I love you so much. I provide for you. I you know, send you to Joseph's schooling school. Go to what? Bally, go piano. I love you. No, but you skip class. I don't want to cane you, really. But if I do, it hurts me more than it hurts you. If you are the child, you know what you're going to say. In that case, uh, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> but you see, God loves them. God has provided for them. God has delivered them. God has cared for them. He wouldn't want these children of His to grow up this way. But now you leave Him no choice but to punish them. So He said, I am put in a difficult position. I am weighed down by you as a cart full of sheaves is weighed down. Therefore, Okay, so this is the punishment. Flight shall perish from the swift. The swift, you know, swift means what? Those 100 meters run 9 seconds and run very fast. Okay. So when enemy come, when the Assyrians come down from the north, they will be the first to run away. God is saying, flight shall perish from the swift. That means even the fastest guy cannot run away from the enemy. They cannot run away, cannot escape the Assyrians. The strong shall not strengthen his power. So those who think they got, you know, bicep, tricep, they got, you know, got security guard in front, got uh, all station dogs behind, got security camera. God is saying, even if you got all your weapons, you got anything, uh, you will not be any more stronger. You will not be strong. The strong shall not strengthen his power. Nor shall the mighty deliver himself. So you think you have lots of horses, lots of soldiers, lots of arrows. Or in our context, you've got lots of aeroplanes, lots of tanks and so on. The mighty cannot deliver himself. He shall not stand who handles the bow. No bow? Arrow and bow? Hey, you stand and then you take aim. But you can't stand because you are so weak. So you, 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 you are, how you aim? You know, arrow. Mm. <laughs> he shall not stand who handles the bow. The swift of foot, which I mentioned earlier. The swift of foot, the one who is very fast with his feet, shall not escape. Nor shall he who rides a horse deliver himself. Wow. Tough city. You know. wow. Enemy come. Cannot run on feet. Higher uh. legs. Uh. So go sit on horse. Even if you ride a horse, you cannot deliver yourself. The most courageous man of might. So if you have any amongst you who are so brave, shall flee naked in that day. Says the Lord. 
why flea naked? Well, naked could mean without clothes. You know, maybe he's in a hurry. He was taking a shower and then come, chow, you know. No time to put on clothes. But I think the word naked means he he ran away without any possession. Don't go in. No time to take your gold bar, no, take your, your ATM, withdraw some money, you know, take your gold chain, whatever. You run away with nothing, even the bravest guy. So, this chapter 2 is but just uh, an introduction of God's pronouncement of judgment against the people of Israel. But we shall see more when we come back after the break in chapter 3.